like what you see here? Then be sure to subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8, a channel devoted to the history of college football. New videos drop twice a week. Click the card in the upper right corner or the link in the description to subscribe now. And now, on with our feature presentation. What's the most famous song that John Denver ever performed? What's the song that most people associate him with? It's Take Me Home Country Roads. I'm not even going to try to pretend otherwise. Literally everyone knows that song. And everyone knows the words to the chorus. You want a sing-along song at karaoke that isn't Sweet Caroline for the 200th time? Try that song. So let's rephrase the question. What's the second most famous song that John Denver ever performed? What's the song that, if you couldn't take yourself home to the country roads, people associate Denver with? In all likelihood, you're going to say that it's his 1975 hit song, Thank God I'm a Country Boy. The song hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100. The song was one of the biggest selling songs of 1975, and is a song that, nearly half a century later, is still incredibly well known to this day. And you might be able to make a compelling argument that it is the most recognizable hit song of 1975. And if you associate this song with baseball, it's for good reason because this song is a staple at every Baltimore Orioles game during the seventh inning stretch. With the exception of 1988 to 93, at every Orioles game since the end of the 1975 season, after the playing of Take Me Out to the Ball Game, you hear the sounds of John Denver, as the song has become ingrained with the Orioles in the same light as Renegade with the Pittsburgh Steelers, or Wonderwall with Minnesota United, or Bang the Drum All Day with the Green Bay Packers, or New York, New York with the New York Yankees, or Sirius with the Chicago Bulls, or any of those other songs, you'll hear Camden Yards sounding like this. <laughs> Which is why this video is not about the Orioles and their connection with the John Denver Classic. Rather, this video is about this team right here, the Detroit Tigers, and their connection with the classic song. Because during the 1984 season, in the middle of an incredible season, the Tigers found themselves in battle in one of the strangest controversies ever, as there was a bitter feud between the fans, the team, and John Denver himself that left neither side feeling as though they had sunshine on their shoulders. Let's put it that way. Because this is the story behind the 1984 Detroit Tigers, John Denver, and one of the strangest controversies in the history of the Detroit Tigers organization. Before I talk about the actual controversy in question, we need some context to understand what the Tigers were doing beforehand, as well as how the Tigers themselves were doing this year. The year is 1984, and through the first two months of the season, perhaps no team in baseball was looking better than Detroit, who was off to an absolutely flying start. It started with a 9-0 record, and continued with the team starting out 37-9, winning an astonishing 80% of their games. They had the best offense in Major League Baseball, scoring 258 runs, or 5.6 runs per game. And they had the best pitching staff in baseball, allowing just 153 runs, or just 3.3 runs per game. Just to give you an idea of how good the Tigers were, by the end of May, only one team the Toronto Blue Jays was even within 10 games of them for the best record in baseball. They had blown their competition out of the water, to the point where it looked like they were playing a completely different sport. After years of having a winning record, but not being good enough to win the AL East and make it into the playoffs, it finally looked like this was going to be the year where for the first time since 1972, the Tigers would be playing October baseball. So you would think that people would be paying attention to the Tigers because of their on-field product, right? You would think that the incredible play of the Tigers would be the reason that they were getting attention. Well, not quite. Because people in Detroit, despite what was looking like the best Tigers team in years, were not exactly the happiest of campers. And that's because of what the Tigers did during the fifth inning of every game. You would think that nothing could go wrong said one writer, where is the controversy the Tigers are obliged to supply? Where are the clubhouse feuds and scandals? Where is the contempt for the manager? 
where are the fans who scream about how much money they're making? Whatever the Tigers want to do right now is okay with everybody. A professional troublemaker has to dig real hard to come up with any controversy at all. That was, except for one, the playing of Thank God I'm a Country Boy during the fifth inning of every game. As the groundskeepers were raking the infield, John Denver would come over the PA system and groundskeeper Herbie Redman would dance to the tune. It had been that way in each of the past five seasons, and was somewhat of a mini Tigers tradition at this point. But there was just one small problem with this, and it's not necessarily the fact that both the Tigers and Orioles use the same song. Two teams can coexist and use the same song, and for years, it didn't matter that both Detroit and Baltimore did something around the John Denver Classic. It's the fact that, as it turns out, John Denver was a pretty big Baltimore Orioles fan. This didn't necessarily matter at first, but after 1983, it all came to a controversy because of a few events. Number one, in 1983, the Tigers were a pretty good team, going 92 and 70. However, they missed the playoffs because they finished second in the AL East, six games behind, you guessed it, the Baltimore Orioles. And for all intents and purposes, Detroit's season ended when in a September doubleheader, they lost both games to the Orioles. If they won that doubleheader, then the AL East would have been up for grabs again, especially since the Tigers and Orioles still had four more meetings against each other. But the Tigers hated the Orioles by this point because the Orioles were the reason that Detroit's playoff drought was still intact. And to add insult to injury, guess who turned out to be a Baltimore Orioles fan? None other than John Denver. Sure, if your song is played over the PA system, it doesn't mean you're a fan of that team. If that was the case, then the infamous Gary Glitter would be a fan of literally every team in American sports. But during the 1983 World Series, which was won by the Baltimore Orioles, John Denver performed the National Anthem at Memorial Stadium during Game 1. But okay, performing the anthem before a team's game doesn't mean you are a fan of that team. Just yesterday, I was in a baseball game where a group of preschoolers sang the National Anthem. And if any of the preschoolers can name a single player on the Arizona Diamondbacks, seeing as they couldn't name any words to the National Anthem, I'd be impressed. But then, later on, at the seventh inning stretch during the same game, John Denver donned an Orioles jacket and in front of a national TV audience did this. As you watch what went on here just moments ago. Yep. Explain that one to me. Because usually, firing up the crowd by wearing the logo of a team and singing their hype song is a pretty good indicator that you're a fan of that team. And obviously, there's nothing wrong with John Denver being a fan of the Baltimore Orioles. Although the great irony in all of this is that the Orioles won this World Series 4-1, and the one game they lost was the John Denver game. But in the eyes of Detroit Tiger fans, they were furious. Here was the man who rooted for the team that knocked us out of the playoffs and was arguably our biggest rival at the time, donning the apparel of that team and actively rooting for the team. And we're playing his song at all of our games and he couldn't care less about our team and our city? It's almost like if I, completely out of nowhere, wrote a hit song and the Tennessee Titans decided to play it as their walkout theme. There would be some uproar over that and understandably so, because in 1984, the backlash and the furor toward John Denver began in Detroit. Newspapers and radio stations began campaigning for the Tigers to play a different song during the fifth inning, and a poll said that two-thirds of people were against playing the song sung by an Orioles fan. And the crazy part? Obviously, Denver knew that the Orioles were using his song, but John Denver himself had no idea that the Tigers were using his song and that this was a tradition. As he said, 
I was kind of thrilled by it. Then I heard about the controversy and said, isn't that something? And with a three-game series coming up against the Baltimore Orioles, the Tigers had a decision to make. Keep the song that's been in place for half a decade, or dump it for a different song that either embraces Detroit or is not being used by another team. And for team president Jim Campbell, the decision, in light of the controversy and the backlash, seemed obvious. Change the song. As Campbell said, personally, I think a mountain has been made out of a molehill. If that's the biggest problem we have the rest of the season, I'll be extremely happy. But we're not married to any one song or person. Even John Denver himself said that the decision to play his song or not should be decided by the players, saying, the deciding factor should be the opinion of the players. If they feel badly about the song because I'm an Orioles fan, they should go with their feeling. What makes this entire drama hysterical and absurd is that the Tigers were having a giant debate over this while Denver was in a corner saying, wait a sec, you guys are using my song? Okay, do whatever you want, I don't care. Denver performed a concert in Detroit the week after the Tigers changed the song, and in an effort to appease Tigers fans, seeing as he was apparently public enemy number one in Detroit, not only addressed the controversy, but performed a reworked rendition of his iconic song, changing the words to Thank God I'm a Tiger Fan, which drew rave reviews. He even joked during that concert by saying, I used to be a Tiger fan, till he started talking about not using my song. Val Cooper wrote the lyrics to that reworked song, saying, I was getting a little irritated that everybody was taking shots at him, and he didn't even know about this. He was a very good sport about it. He said, I understand there's a controversy about my song. As for the Tigers, they experimented with quite a few songs to play during the fifth inning, but John Denver was out. That song was given the Rocky Mountain goodbye. Usually with a controversy between two parties, both parties have an understanding of what the issue is. But this is one of those rare moments where you've got a controversy, where one party is furious, and the other party genuinely has no idea what's going on, who's involved, or what the controversy even is. Denver was completely oblivious to the whole thing, and understandably so. Just on the surface, it seems crazy. He wrote a song, a few years later, the Tigers picked it up, nobody had a problem with it, and then out of nowhere, they started having a problem with it. And not for any content in the lyrics that is inappropriate now, or for anything controversial that Denver did to tarnish his image and reputation. He just wore an Orioles jacket during the World Series and said that he was an Orioles fan. That was it, and that caused the biggest controversy of the entire season for the 1984 World Series champion. Because in 1984, the Tigers made it very clear that they wanted no more evenings with John Denver. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.